Peace be with you. My name is Alan Kiesler of the Institute of All Intelligent Life. And we are starting a new week and a new time period in California. We have shifted from daylight savings time to standard time. So it's now 7.30 in the evening in Pakistan instead of 6.30 as it was before when it is 6.30 here in California. So that's why our class is starting an hour later in Pakistan and throughout most of the world where there is not this daylight savings time feature. So we're going to be talking now about the different species of intelligent life throughout our world, our galaxy, and in other galaxies also perhaps, but mostly we're going to be talking about the beings that we are familiar with here on our planet. That is those who have visited us in the past and are visiting us now. So we're going to wait for a minute as a few more people join the class and we will do one or two deep breaths. Again, I repeat, this is important. This is very helpful to come to a higher level of consciousness, a more peaceful mood, a more focused mentality. So one or two moments. Let us take, take time now to do a couple of deep breaths. Just inhale slowly to the count of about 8 and exhale slowly to the count of about 16. You can open your eyes or close your eyes as you wish. I generally prefer to close mine, not necessary, but sit comfortably and breathe. We'll do one more. Again, as I've said before, when I do this, I don't count one, two, three, four like that. You can do that. But I repeat the name of Allah. And with each one, I count on my fingers how many times. So it's very easy. So one more deep breath. Okay, so I'm going to begin by just telling about some of the extraterrestrial species whom I have met myself or who I have seen, not necessarily with these external eyes, but with our internal eyes. Just like when we are asleep and dreaming, we don't uh, see anything with our external eyes. Our external eyes are closed, but we see many things. So those eyes are real. You can call them our mental eyes or our subtle eyes. So we can also meet people and communicate with them on that level, the subtle level. So I have talked a number of times about the beings I met when I was nine years old, and again many years later. I'm not going to talk about them now, but I want to talk about some contacts I've had on the subtle level, or astral level, or mental level, level of the dreaming. And uh, the first one I want to talk about is a beautiful red-colored, what we would call a dragon. Um, Sometimes in the West people think dragons are myths. Uh, but in China it's well known, especially China is closely associated with these dragons. And uh, they are of all different types, all different colors. And the most beautiful one that I met and am associated with is a red colored, bright red. Almost a glowing, beautiful red color 
and he is very large. It was it was hard for me to estimate, but maybe 40 feet tall. That's the way I he seemed to me to be very big like that when I saw him, and uh, he had four appendages, two arms and two legs, and he stood upright, or he seemed to be floating more than standing actually. Um, but he was upright, like he could be standing on two legs, and he had a tail and wings, and looked very similar to pictures that we often see from China of dragons. So I'm just introducing him first, because many people have very negative ideas about reptilians. So all reptilians are not bad. There are some very prominent types of reptilians that have been prominent, that is, in our history, in the history of our planet for the last few thousand, several thousand years. And some of them are very selfish, and we would call them evil. And uh, among them, one of the leaders is a white color, pure white, like a, not like a European person, but white like a white piece of paper. So there are many different types of reptilians. Some of them are evil, some of them are good, just like there are evil and good human beings that look like those of us who are now in human bodies. <laughs> so uh, that was one being who I was fortunate enough to see. and He didn't really communi talk to me. He didn't talk to me. He communicated to me telepathically. And it was a very wonderful experience. Um, another type of reptilian that I also met um, is a greenish color, and this was a woman. She had yellow, she has yellowish eyes, and of course the reptilians generally are characterized by perpendicular pupils. That is, our pupils are round. Cats are the most common, perhaps, creature that have vertical pupils. The pupils are not round, but they are a slit. And sometimes they get wider or narrower, depending on the light, but so m many reptilians generally, like reptiles, have a perpendicular pupil. So she did. It was very clear. Uh, she was also very beautiful, very tender, gentle person. Not at all like the images of reptiles or reptilians that we usually have of being very harsh. Um, so, and uh, I might just mention that when I met Arthur C. Clarke, I've said previously that I met Arthur C. Clarke in Sri Lanka at his bungalow in Colombo in 1985. And uh, he, if you're not familiar with him, he is one of the leading science fiction writers of the 20th century um, and responsible for movie productions also of science fiction. Uh, 2001 Space Odyssey, one of his most famous books and movies. So Arthur C. Clarke also told me that he had met a reptilian who also, uh, as I recall, was uh, had some yellowish and greenish color also to his body. So these uh, are just uh, three examples of reptilian creatures who are not those nasty <laughs> reptilians. So I wanted to start out with this just to dispel that idea that the reptilians are all bad. Um, then there are, in fact, the vast majority, I think, of people that we are familiar with on our planet are human-like. Look, That is, they look very much like us. Some have larger eyes, especially those who live under the surface of our planet, uh, known as the Agarthans. They are a human race whom we are genetically related with. We are um, their cousins, I guess we could say. That is, we both have the same ancestors. And uh, they also look very, very much like us, except their eyes are larger and they are slender. And sometimes they're taller than we are also. But uh, they could pass in human society. And they often do. And um, I'm just 
going to mention a couple of the other species, not that I've met personally or I remember encountering, but that are important for us to be aware of. Uh, one group is the cetaceans, who are quite different in uh, bodily shape from us. That is, they are like whales and dolphins, creatures that live in the water. And some of them are just as intelligent as human beings, in some ways more intelligent. So we share this planet, we share the surface of this planet with them, where they are under the water. Um, so this is another group of intelligent life. These, these beings are also, of course, we've committed great crimes by killing off so many of them because those in Western civilization have been unaware of their intelligence, that they are spiritual beings just like us. So we've actually been murdering a lot of cetaceans without knowing what we are doing by our stupidity in the Western civilization. So um, there are other types of beings who don't look like us but are similar to us and they have faces or heads that look more like horses or cats or dogs uh, or amphibians like frogs so there are many, many different types of facial features and uh, skin color and skin type that different creatures have. Some of them are furry. Some of them look very much like bears. Uh, and the explanation of this is that on different planets, the different second density forms, that is the different animal forms, they can evolve into intelligent self reflective beings. So therefore, in different parts of our solar system and galaxy and throughout the universe, there are different types of humanoid beings who have features that look like more like animals than we do. We look more like primates, and other humanoid beings look more like these different species that we are familiar with. And again, let me repeat that there are good and not so good creatures in all of these different categories. So there are wonderful, tender, loving species that look like cats, or that look like bears, or that look like whales and fish and amphibians. So, and there are, not that frequently, but there are negative groups that have these similar sorts of features. So this is important to understand that we don't judge somebody prematurely on the basis of their features, their facial features. And as I've said before, what's very, very interesting, and when the scientists involved in the secret space programs first learned about this, they were quite shocked that how come almost everybody that they met because they were meeting them. How is it possible that they all look humanoid? They almost all look very much like us in the sense of having a head with two eyes, two ears, a mouth. Sometimes the nose, there's no nose, but there are two little slits usually for nostrils. And they have two arms and two legs and a torso. A number of them have a tail. Um, and some of them have wings and some of them have horns. So there are all types of creatures, but the vast majority of them, at least the ones that we have contacted, are humanoid. Of course, there are other types of bodies that beings can have. And uh, the most commonly heard about one probably is a sphere. That is, there are beings, conscious beings, just like us, but their body is just a sphere and it has no arms and legs and head like we do. But there is a consciousness associated with them and they can communicate with us. And there are also beings of light. There are also beings of air, fire. We are mostly, of course, earth and water, that's well known. Uh, but there are plasma beings also. And as I've explained in the past, there are beings that look like, or maybe we would say they are, like mountains or lakes and rivers. They are also beings of consciousness. That is, they have their own 
individual awareness just like we do. And clouds. There are also beings who have the bodies of clouds and the bodies of trees and flowers and different types of plant forms. So when we're talking about intelligent life, uh, generally plant and animal forms are not intelligent, where we define intelligent as being self-reflective and aware the way we are able to reflect about ourselves and think about ourselves and think philosophically and wonder why are we here, what is the goal of life, what is God. So animals generally don't ask questions like that, nor do plants, but there are some beings that look very much like animals and trees that are conscious like we are, reflectively conscious. So there is a vast, vast scope of uh, intelligent life forms. So we should not be prejudiced against any of them. I want to stress this again and again because a lot of human beings who become familiar with the galactic histories uh, develop a sort of prejudice against reptilians. And I want to stress that we should not think that the reptilian form is necessarily evil. Of course, it's true that by far the greater majority of uh, the negative beings who have been, in fact, ruling our planet, have been exercising considerable control and manipulation of our planet for thousands of years. They are reptilians. And another group who are allied with them, who have been allied with them, are insectoid. They look sort of like, they have insect-like appearance, uh, different types of insects. Some are grasshopper-like, some are praying mantis type, some you know have big eyes like insects do. So there are many, many different types of species of life, and although some of them we have a more negative attitude towards generally, like the insectoids and, re and reptiloids, we should not judge anyone in advance just by their appearance. Just like some people who are not familiar with people of other races on, the, on this planet, they judge or they're even afraid of or shocked by seeing somebody of a very different race or color. So... Uh, that should be an example that we can learn from, that we should not be shocked or afraid of a being who has a very different form than we do, just because of that unfamiliarity with such intelligent life species. So I probably have left out some of the important ones, uh, that is the important types of beings, but I just wanted at first to introduce this idea before we go into any details, that there are many, many different types of intelligent life in our species, on our solar system and in our galaxy, and we should not be prejudiced against any of them. I see we have a lot of questions today, <laughs> so um, let me just think, is there anything I should talk about before I go to the questions? Because this is, of course... In one sense, this may be the most interesting topic that people want to discuss, and people have always wondered about the different forms of intelligent life, and why are they that way. Of course, uh, those who are familiar with the Quran know about jinn, and about beings that have bodies made of fire. Um, so there's one example of an intelligent life form, which is somewhat different than we are. Uh, but there are actually unlimited numbers, we could not count them, of different types of species. Because just in our galaxy alone, there are like 250 billion stars. And each one, or almost all of those stars, have planets that can be inhabited by beings like ourselves. So, I mean, 250 billion is a number that we really can't comprehend very easily, with you know, we can n name it, but how much, it's a huge number. So, and there are trillions of other galaxies also, like our Milky Way galaxy is only one of many, many galaxies. So different galaxies may be different sizes and may be defined differently, but there are just an uncountable number of different types of intelligent life. So... Okay, I'm going to go to questions now, just because I see we have a lot of good questions already.
Okay, thank you for all your greetings and Islam alaikums and how are you and hi sir. I'm not going to mention those or respond to them. But uh, Abdul Majid from APK Pakistan is commenting that he likes the video. Thank you. I'm uh, very appreciative of such comments, but again, I'm not going to. I saw there were many, many comments. So Irfan Jad is asking, what's going on? So this is perhaps a little uh, shocking or surprising or interesting <laughs> or difficult to understand. Is it really possible for some people? Uh, what is going on? This is uh, just a, I'm reporting on different types of intelligent life that are present in our solar system and in our galaxy. That's what's going on. So again, Almost all these comments are just, okay, here we have something maybe a little different. Yes. Iqbal Vahid says, Mr. Allen, high respect for you. Shout out from Dubai. You have got excellent knowledge, though not about the reptiles, but how's your view about petting animals? Wolf, dogs, cats, what impacts? So, I'll see more. Uh, what, what impacts it brings to a human life? All right, well, this is a very good question. And it is, like you say, it's not about really the topic of today. We're talking about forms of intelligent life. But because animals uh, are very similar to us in many ways, um, and there are, of course, major differences too, I'll talk a little bit about it. And especially petting animals, like dogs and cats. Uh, animals are second density beings. And if you're not familiar with the term, go look, go and look at some of my... Uh, videos for the past, uh, that is these live classes for the past uh, couple of weeks and you'll see I talk about the densities there. I'm not going to repeat that information. But um, so we have animals like dogs and cats which first let me mention that we impact them. That is we help them come to third density. That is by associating with us they can more easily come to a higher type of consciousness, a higher type of awareness like our own. And as I've mentioned before, you can definitely see this if you have pets. You can look in their eyes sometimes and you can start seeing, oh, this is a person, this dog or this cat or this horse or this cow or this whatever type of pet you have, even a bird, can exhibit some sort of reflection. You can sort of feel that. So what impacts do dogs and cats and pets bring to human life? That's an interesting question. Of course they often bring us uh, consolation when we're feeling lonely or alone. A, a pet can make us feel better. We have some companionship. Uh, and actually animals often can help in healing uh, when we're sick. Uh, the energy from the animal can also help us be healed. Um, I'm really not very familiar. I'm trying to think of anything I've heard or experienced about animals and spiritual impact. But uh, of course it's very well known. Maybe it's not that well known, but it should be. But it's well known if you study it. Not been publicized by the mass media much, but if you do research you can find out about uh, dolphins especially, cetaceans. They have had impact on people's spiritual awareness also, as well as healing of the bodily diseases. So, of course, the cetaceans often are really not animals, they're human, that is, they are third density beings. Okay, genetically related, are you talking about evolution? Wajid Ahmed Khan asks. Um, well, this is a very good question. Um, evolution means two basically different things as I've described previously. One, there's genetic uh, evolving like Darwin talked about, which has nothing to do with consciousness or conscious direction or purpose. It just is by chance. And then there's the evolution which is directed. So that evolution too, the directed evolution, the first type of evolution is not only wrong, but it's foolish. It's very, very uh, stupid, you might say, to think that that sort of evolution can happen. Long ago, 
it was proven mathematically that that sort of Darwinian evolution cannot happen. And it's only because the media and educational systems are controlled by the cabal, that is by this very selfish and evil group who have been manipulating humanity for thousands of years. It's only because of their control over our educational and uh, media systems that we don't know the truth about Darwinian evolution being a fraud and being impossible, mathematically totally impossible. So we are genetically related to all the other creatures. That's not only the Darwinian, but that's the common understanding that there are, there are genetic relationships between our bodies and the bodies of animals and plants even. So we are all genetically related. Um, and this evolution, however, that happened was all directed. It was consciously directed by beings who are much more conscious than we are. So um, what's very interesting, if you've seen I've written about this. You can look at it on, my, on the allintelligentlife.com website. There is a post that I made there in September, I believe, talking about uh, timeline wars and how um, different species, uh, excuse me, there is an article about timeline, war, timeline wars, but the one I'm talking about is a different one, which is on the page. Um, I can't even remember right now the name of it exactly, um, but it talks about uh, our family of all intelligent life and that we are all genetically related and although not genetically compatible in many cases, we are actually genetically compatible with some uh, humanoid beings that are quite different than ourselves, but even those that are not genetically compatible are hybridizable and this is going on. That is, hybrids, there are many, many species which are actually hybrids, which were genetically engineered, which were created uh, as a hybrid between, say, a reptilian and a humanoid species, uh, a reptilian and a human species. So those sorts of hybrids do exist. So we are all genetically related, and as I mentioned in that article, there is not only this program of hybridization, which certain, the greys are involved in some hybridization programs to create a different species which will be halfway between themselves and ourselves so they'll be their descendants also so they can live on this planet which often it's hard for them to do in their unhybridized form so there is that sort of hybridization program going on and has been going on for some time and there are as Corey Good has report, reported 22 different genetic programs that have been going on for thousands of years involving human beings, involving ourselves. We are being upgraded, we are being transformed in different ways by these genetic experimentation programs. But the point is that I'm making right now is that such genetic hybridization is possible between species and that is resulting in our rainbow family. That is, we sometimes use that term to talk about the human race where, you know, there are very dark colored black races, there are fair colored races, there are brown races, there are yellow races, there are red races. We usually use these different colors to describe different races. And so, uh, formerly, these different races were separate and evolved, developed separately. But now, in the past century or two especially, these races have begun interbreeding and now there's only one rainbow race. That is, there are all different colors of human beings, but there are so many human beings that are the result of mixed marriages that really we now have a rainbow human race. It's not separate races. So in the same way, this is a pretty amazing idea, but in the same way these hybridization programs and interbreeding even programs are leading to a rainbow family of all intelligent life. That is, all the intelligent life in our galaxy is literally becoming one family in this way. So we are genetically related. Sir, you give the vote H or T. <laughs> I'm Imran Sadiq. I have said before, I uh, cannot vote for either of them. <laughs> and uh, they both have their weaknesses that make it impossible for me to 
agree to vote for either of them. So, uh, neither is the answer. Okay. All right. Ahmed Talib has written, Sir Alan Kiesler, NASA found a pyramid in outer space and nobody knows how it... What do you think about that? Is the same pyramid we have or it's just something different or illusion? Yes, NASA has found pyramids on the moon, on Mars, and throughout outer space. The pyramid is a very common form, a common shape. And as I have mentioned a few weeks ago, the uh, Venusians, that is the raw social memory complex that began from Venus, they're not living there anymore, they also used pyramids in their third density life. They were taught by some other sixth density beings to use pyramids uh, both for physical healing and for spiritual healing or spiritual evolution. So that pyramid shape is very, very important. In fact, you can do some research on it. It's available on the internet. The Russians particularly have done a lot of research on pyramid shapes and they've found amazing phenomena. Just by putting something under a pyramid, a plant, for example, grows better, produces better, more you know, both larger, more colorful, and nutritionally more satisfying, taste-wise more satisfying fruits and vegetables are produced in plants grown under a pyramid. And uh, there have been a lot of proof of this, but again, this is something that the mass media, the Zionist-controlled, cabal-controlled world mass media has not reported on, but it's available on the internet, fortunately. So do some research, especially on the pyramids that the Russians have done. You've seen they've built a number of some very large pyramids and uh, there's been a, quite a bit of publicity in it about it in Russia. Uh, so yes, so pyramids are found everywhere. They are part of this technology that is you know unfamiliar to most of us but the Grand Pyramid, the Great Pyramid in Egypt was also used for um, consciousness as well as human health uh, development. So they're not an illusion. They are forms, that is a shape actually, that is used many, many places by many different civilizations. So there definitely are pyramids that have been photographed on the moon and on Mars and throughout our solar system on different moons of different planets and on other star systems. The pyramid is a very common shape. And uh, NASA has found them, but they conceal the fact that they've found them. They even just brush out, you know, they cover over the pictures of the pyramids. But they have come through also. There are plenty of NASA photographs that either intentionally or unintentionally, that is, there are some people working within NASA who are very good people and they're trying to get this information out, so they allow these photographs to be made public. Um, so there are pyramids visible on Mars, especially in the Moon, that are on NASA photographs that have slipped through their censorship. Um, but yes, they're very widespread. Joanna Saeb, those you met, where do they live? <clears throat> um, very good question. Uh, I think that the best answer to that is they live mostly in different densities, different dimensions. That is, you, you may not be able to locate out in our space that we see at night where they live. Um, they haven't told me. Actually, I haven't, you know, really challenged them to tell me uh, where are you from. Um, but some of them are definitely from different star systems in our galaxy. I think the Orion constellation, which is a very prominent constellation, one of the most easily identifiable ones in our sky, which is visible now at night, at the place where our planet Earth is circling around the sun, is such that now in the, at, the night, in the, at night we can see the Orion constellation. So a number of different beings have come from there. In fact, although I did not say this before, uh, that lady who I had met when I was nine years old who told me that she had come from somewhere else. She never told me where. But I thought, this is just my intuition, I may be wrong, I thought that her people had come from the Orion constellation. 
So, um, but now they live, as I've said, underneath the planet surface, underneath our planet surface. And there are many different species living underneath our planet surface. There are the Agarthans, who are very human-like, who are very similar, in fact, practically identical to us genetically. They are our relatives. We had common ancestors, and they are a little bit different than us, mainly because we have been <laughs> genetically engineered. Our genes have been adjusted, so they're a little bit different than us. And there are reptilians who live under the surface of our planet, and there are other species also. So where where they live, uh, there are also many, many other dimensions, both time dimensions and space dimensions. So some of these beings are from our past or future, and some of them are from um, areas that we could not see externally with these eyes. Uh, what work do they do here? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by work, but I, I, I don't know if you mean a job, like <laughs> how do they earn their money, uh, or what is their mission? What is what? So I'm going to take the second meaning. Uh, their mission primarily, the ones that I've met, is to help us become aware of our real history and our real position, our spiritual nature and to help us in this transition that we're going through right now. We're going through a major transition, as I've said many times, and many persons that are in contact with extraterrestrials have explained also that we are here in a very, very crucial period right now. It's the middle of a transformation from third to fourth density, where we are becoming galactic humans. We are entering our cosmic family as members that we have been isolated from or quarantined from for thousands of years. So their main work is to help us through this transition. Um, of course there are some who are trying to hinder the transition also. There are some both human beings on earth, the cabal as we call them, the so-called Illuminati. Uh, they are trying to stop us from ascending, from achieving this fourth density transition. But most of the beings that are here are helping us. They are informing us. They are educating us. And they are also encouraging us. And they are also protecting us both from the negative entities and from the high energy. It's called the photon belt. That is our solar system is right now passing through a, a photon belt of heightened energy and uh, it's so strong that it would be hard for us to uh, accommodate or to adjust ourselves to it all at once. So therefore, many of these beings are helping us by moderating the influence of our solar, uh, excuse me, our photon belt entrance. So um, again, there are a lot of details available about this, and uh, one of the most astonishing things is for the last few decades, but even especially just for the last few years, many spheres, beings, powerful great beings who have spherical shapes, they have entered our solar system specifically with this purpose of moderating the influence of this photon belt, these higher energy cosmic rays that we have entered. So that's one of the works that they do, <laughs> one of their most important works, the work they're doing is to uh, help us gradually ease into this area of high energy that our solar system has entered. Um, what did you talk about, Joanna Saheba is asking. Um, I, I think I mentioned that uh, when I met that red dragon being, <laughs> dragon-like, actually they are dragons, but we our idea of dragons is wrong, that's why. I hesitate to call them dragons, but they look just like the dragons that the Chinese have made popular, uh, did not talk. He didn't say anything to me uh, that I could hear out loud, but I felt a big download of information. And uh, I guess probably the most important thing is he was just sharing with me personal information about my identity and my purpose. and. Um, so again, uh, what do you talk? What did you talk about? 
uh, I've already explained a little bit about what that uh, woman talked about that I met when I was nine years old. Um, she mainly told me uh, to be happy, <laughs> to um, be loving, to be kind, and encouraged me not to be afraid of anything. And uh, she told me that they are helping us, they're up upgrading us to help us achieve our natural abilities. That is, all of, the, all of us uh, have natural abilities that we usually call psychic abilities, like telepathy. So those abilities, they are helping us acquire also. So she was telling me about things like that. Okay, Gemma Art, do you mean that at the moment we don't see them because of our incapability or because they have the ability to stay invisible? Um, it's mainly because they are keeping themselves invisible from us. Uh, they do have the ability to stay invisible. And uh, because in one way we haven't been ready for them, that's why they haven't made themselves visible. From time to time they have made themselves visible. Uh, in the distant past, they were much more uh, visible to many, many people that we're talking about many thousands of years ago. Uh, but over the last few millennia, last couple of millennia, they have not been making themselves very much visible for two reasons. One, to enable us to achieve, to evolve uh, using our own free will, which their visible presence could interfere with. Uh, and Another reason is that they wanted to keep themselves away from us so we wouldn't disturb them. So there are a variety of reasons why they have kept themselves invisible. Um, but we do have the capability to see them. But the main reason we don't is that we're not ready for it. We might get freaked out, we may get shocked, we may get afraid, we may not know how to deal with it. So then they gradually introduce themselves to us like dreams. That is the common way they first introduce themselves to us in dreams. We may have dreams of them and uh, they are gradually becoming more visible and the time will come in the not very distant future. In fact, the schedule was that they would have already made themselves visible to us. Uh, but that date has been postponed because the, okay, I'll just explain one more thing about this. The Cabal that is, these negative beings who are a group of both extraterrestrials and human leadership, uh, they were supposed to, uh, they knew they had to give up their control of this planet. And they were supposed to do that some 20 years ago or so. Uh, but they refused to follow that schedule. Uh, of course, that wasn't so surprising, I guess, but uh, it was not what they were supposed to do. So because they refused to relinquish the control that they had been given under the plan of God, you can say the plan of the divine hierarchy, they uh, fought. They desperately tried to cling on to their power. And uh, But within 10 or 15 years, they were supposed to have done that, and then the mass sightings, as we say, the visibility of our extraterrestrial friends would have been manifested to us some years ago, a few years ago. Uh, but that had to be postponed because we weren't ready for it. We weren't ready for it because the information that was supposed to be more freely made available to us was not because of the activities of the Cabal especially. So they will become visible to us and we all have our part to play in that, which is to become kinder and more loving ourselves practice more meditation uh, and prayer. And soon, as we serve others more than we serve ourselves, we are kind to each other, uh, the changing energies will allow them to make themselves visible to us as we ourselves become ready for them. So be happy. <laughs> as I said, that was the, that's the main message it seems like I've always gotten from all my extraterrestrial contacts is be happy, don't worry, things are going okay, don't be in anxiety. Uh, the plan may have been postponed a little bit, but it is coming. That is the plan which everybody knows about. That is, every tradition all around the world knows that the time will come in the future when 
the situation on this planet will be transformed and peace will be established on earth. So that is coming very soon. So don't worry, be happy. Uh, they, we will be able to see them. We will see them definitely. Probably in the lifetimes of most of us that are alive now. I may not be alive. Maybe it may take 10 or 20 years and I may not live that long. But those of you who are in your 20s, 30s, 40s, certainly uh, if you live a normal human lifetime, it should be within your lifetime that that will all become open, wide open. Shujaudin Qureshi, things seen in dreams and closed eyes may not be real. How can we be sure they are real? I see many things or places in dreams, but in real life they either do not exist or quite different. Yes, uh, dreams can be of different types. There are dreams which are literal travels to other places, to other time frames, um, and some of them are and can be confirmed by actually going to the place that was in the dream. Uh, usually, however, dreams are somewhat different than physical reality. They may be messages that we are sending to ourselves, that is our deeper awareness, our deeper consciousness is sending us messages. So dreams are not real in that sense, usually. They are not physically real. They may be like predictions of the future that don't happen, although often they are metaphorical and often if we understand them properly we can understand when they do happen. They may be a little different than the dream but the idea that the dream gave us does come true. So there are many different types of dreams uh, but often, often enough they are very very real and we, we can learn things from the messages that the dreams give us. So yes, yeah, sometimes they're not at all real. They just can be figments of the imagination that have very little bearing on our lives or our reality. Okay, again Shijauddin Qureshi is asking, in Islam there is mention of jinns, but there is no mention of jinns in other religions. Is there any existence of Draculas in reality? So there are a couple of questions here, a couple of comments. Um, I think there is mention of jinns in other religions. They may use different names, um, but the, the jinns are just another type of being. Uh, it may be, I'm not sure of this, but nagas are mentioned, and nagas may overlap with jinns. That is, there may be some jinns that are called nagas and nagas that are called jinns, and there may be some th differences too, not a complete overlap. But different names are used for different types of creatures in different languages, and often they do overlap with each other. And uh, I think there are beings, the Draculas, again this can be interpreted in different ways, and then there are um, true beings that exist that have been called Draculas, and then there have been stories made up about them that are different than the reality, but as I understand it, there is a basis for that uh, idea of a Dracula, but it may be somewhat different than what we think about Draculas. <laughs> okay. All right. Shahid Hussein is saying to Gemma Art, any living can see in specific frequency domain only. Okay, that's a very good comment. That there are different frequencies and uh, different types of beings can live in different frequencies and therefore we may not see them. And actually this is what frequently happens. I myself has ex have experienced this also. That sometimes a being may be with us, may be right with us in the same space that we occupy, but we can't see them because they're in a different frequency. They're in a different frequency domain as Shahid Hussain calls it. And it's just like, I've used this example before recently, that a radio frequency is present. All different radio frequencies are present and different radio stations are broadcasting on different frequencies and they're all right here right now but we have to tune the dial to hear that frequency. So in the same way there are different frequencies and different beings live or exist in different frequencies and sometimes people have said this, they, they can sort of fade in and out of reality. That is a, for example, a flying saucer, a UFO, 
may appear and then may fade out. So there are different frequencies definitely and we can or cannot see them according to the frequencies that are visible to us and the frequencies that they are in. Gemma Art says, My father used to write on different interesting topics. In fact, his most interesting topic was ancient history. But one of his articles was about animal characteristics uh, showing in humans. And he was of uh, a different... He was of the opinion that each person has a strong characteristic of a different animal. Sometimes I also see in animals a strong image in others. Yes very true uh, and there can be different reasons for that also some of it could be actually genetic um, all right that's a very very interesting topic but we won't go into that anymore now because we do have a I think a lot more questions and comments here um, let's see here we have a Long comment from Iqbal Wahid. Thank you so much, Mr. Alan Kieser. You have been quite informative. Such a great blessing for learners. Can't wait to watch you again soon. I don't like to over-occupy you with my questions in live sessions. How can I be privileged by your mentorship? I have got infinite questions about our existence and living beings around. Appreciate your great wisdom. Be blessed always. Um, well, I don't know where you live, but if you're in the United States, you can come and meet me here in Esparto. If you're in Pakistan, I hope I will be coming to Pakistan again next year, if not before the end of this year, inshallah. So you can see my schedule. I will be posting on my Facebook page here what my schedule of travels is in Pakistan, so you can come and meet me. I look forward to meeting you. Or you can continue just listening to these classes. I have no objection at all to asking questions in live sessions. Don't worry if, if you're over, uh, if you're asking too many questions. I have never felt that way about anybody. So, um, of course, I do request uh, that you give donations. I am, I have considerable expenses in running this. You can't get cheap high-grade internet coverage like you can in Pakistan here in the United States. So it costs me $60 every month just to be able to have this feature of giving these live classes. So uh, I would appreciate it if you are wanting to ask a lot of questions, if you give some donation. And as you can see on my website, allintelligentlife.com, uh, if you want to have a personal con conversation with me, a personal consultation, you can also do that. Uh, by giving a donation of $95 for a 45-minute session. All right. Let me just check the time here. We've gone on pretty long, but let me see. I'll try to take the few more questions that we have here. So Imran Sadiq is saying, Sir, my father, like he said to me, he talked to you. If you like, talk to me. Um, okay, I'm talking to you now. <laughs> Joanna Sahiba, hmm, they made wars all over the planet. Those leaders are still here. Yes, those leaders are still here, but they are losing their power very quickly. So they've been trying to make the Third World War. The same people that made the First and Second World Wars and many other wars, they tried to make a Third World War, but they have been prevented. So they're not in that position of leadership anymore that they were. Their power is being greatly controlled, curtailed, reduced. And uh, so although they're still here, it's just they're on their last legs. They're going to be out very soon. Don't worry. I think the USA is at great danger, Joanna Saheb. We're all at great danger, but don't worry. Things are going to be worked out very soon. It will become obvious. Andrea Green, barely dream anymore. What about lucid dreaming? Ah, this is a very good question. Lucid dreaming is actually an important technique that we can cultivate. Lucid dreaming means when you're dreaming and then you realize, oh, I'm dreaming. And... Sometimes, in fact, 
you're having a lucid dream and you wake up and you can go back into the dream consciously. So uh, there's another type of experience which is called uh, directed meditation which is very similar to lucid dreaming in which you are not asleep you are aware consciously aware and awake but you go into a dreamlike state so and then you can access other realms of knowledge and reality that are not uh, available to our ordinary waking reality so it's good to cultivate that and meditation is a very good way to cultivate that sort of lucid dreaming it's a good practice and it, you can do it also by when you're going to sleep at night make the intention that I want to remember my dreams and I want to become aware that I'm dreaming while I'm dreaming and gradually by practice we can all develop that ability send your website allintelligentlife.com um, I can post it but if you go on my Facebook page you're on my Facebook page now if you go to uh, my information it has Institute of All Intelligent Life www.allintelligentlife.com so it's right there um, so Imran Sadek has said sir send your personal email um, okay I will do that but I can warn you now <laughs> I cannot answer all my emails also uh, like I can't answer all my comments that I get on my Facebook page but I can give you my email address and I will try to correspond with you a little bit at least so um, we've had 50 comments so far <laughs> so I think I'm gonna end now our time is up but thank you all very very much and we're going to go into much more detail now about the different species of intelligent life throughout our galaxy and uh, their histories and their forms and where they are from and uh, look forward to talking with you about that okay thank you all very very much may God protect us all <laughs>